All right, so in the recorded lecture last week, because I wasn't here, I hope you all watched it, right? You had to take a quiz to, so I assume you watched it. In that recorded lecture, we developed the weak form and the finite element formulation for a scalar field in two dimensions, right? So these are the type of, you know, I used a very generic model equation, but of course this is the same type of equation that we use to solve the Poisson problem or Laplace's equation, right? So this is the, you know, and I think I even gave, gave as an example that, you know, that you use uh, the same type of equation to solve um, for flow in porous media, of course. So that's, that's how it's relevant. And then just at the end, I introduced a couple of different, typically in two dimensions, we use either triangles or hexahedrals to mesh up the domain. And I gave a couple of examples of interpolating polynomials. So today we want to actually uh, compute what the so-called element stiffness matrices are. And we use that term stiffness matrix generically. It really comes from mechanics, but uh, you might be used, more used to the term transmissibility matrix or something like that, right? So, uh, so if you haven't noticed when you were working on the 1D problems, you may have noticed by now that the element stiffness matrices are irrespective of the global coordinates, right? What you, especially if you, have, if, you, if you have constant coefficients, right? It doesn't matter what the global coordinates are. Uh, when you develop the element stiffness matrix, you always get the same thing, right? So what we'll do in 2D, we'll start with a triangle, and we'll define a local coordinate system, which I'll call x bar y bar. So it, it resides within the element, okay? So what we'll see in 2D is while the global coordinate system doesn't matter, the node numbering matters. So we're going to call this lower, um, lower corner 1, 2, 3. And we'll see how the stiffness matrix changes as we change the node numbering. But for now, we'll just develop it for, for this problem. And of course, that kind of model problem we're looking at was derived in the lecture, but uh, the previous lecture. But we'll specialize it a little bit. Okay, and we showed that the stiffness matrix Kij is equal to BTCB dx dy, where B is basically the derivatives of the shape functions. So this is all from the last lecture. C is the coefficient matrix, so A11, A12, 0, A21, A22, 0, 0, 0, A00. And so we've specialized it, or we're, we're going to specialize it in this case, such that this is 0, and this is 0, and this is 0. All right. So. Let's go ahead and, and develop or compute the stiffness matrix. And I think it's been helpful to you guys when I sort of do the actual computations, like in Mathematica. Because I know when I recorded it before, I've already had some people come out of my office for questions, and they referred to that recording or how I developed it. So I think it's useful for you guys to have that when you go and you solve your problems. Because you solve the problems on the computer, right? So. I think it's useful, so I'll, uh, 
So what's the interpolation, what's an interpolating polynomial or field for a constant triangle? One plus, you know, C1 plus C2x plus C3y, and it's the unknown coefficients that we want to solve for. So, yeah, and uh, let me make this bigger. Can you guys see that? Right. So, here we're going to say 1xy. So, this is nothing new. We've seen, we've done this in one dimension many times, right? It's just now we've added the second dimension, y. And so we're going to evaluate this polynomial at the nodal locations. And we must do it in the order of the node numbering, right? So th those of you that came in a little bit late, um, we're, we're developing the, sh the uh, element stiffness matrix for this particular element. And the node numbering matters, OK? So we're going to evaluate the stiffness matrix at node 1 in the local coordinate system. Oh, and I guess I should say that this length is A, this length is B, right? So in the local coordinate system, x bar, y bar, what is the x bar, y bar location of node 1? Right? Node 2? A0, right. In, in the x bar, y bar location. So in terms of A, right. So it's 0 in the y, so it's A0, right. And then what about y? Or you know, no, no number 3. Yeah, OK. So just to be clear. So we're going to evaluate at node 1. We have 0. Y is 0. At node 2, we have A. Y is 0. And at node 3, we have 0, B, right? And so our shape functions are x dot inverse A, right? So that's our shape functions in terms of x and y for this element. So then our B matrix is the derivative, well, it's a table. I'm just going to do this one line at a time so you can see. So the first, the first row of the B matrix, I take the derivative of every shape function with respect to x, right? So that's the table of the derivatives of nn with respect to x, where i goes from 1 to 3, because there's three shape functions, right? Right, so that's the first row. The second row would be with respect to y, and the third row is just the shape functions themselves, okay? So take the derivative with respect to y, and the third row is just the shape functions. Right, so there's my total B matrix. Okay. And the C matrix is just the coefficients, right? So in this case, I'm just going to say 
I'm just going to say that A11 equals to A22 equals to Ke, right? So that's just a constant. It's, this would be like for an isotropic material. So if you were looking at pressure or temperature diffusion in an isotropic material, you, you just have one transmissibility coefficient, right? So it's just going to be Ke, 0, 0, 0, Ke, 0, 0, 0, 0. Alright, so then the stiffness matrix, I just have to integrate and, you know, I'm, I'm integrating over, so I'm in, I have to integrate in two dimensions over a triangle, so what are the bounds of integration? Can you help me with that? If it was a tr if it was a square, yeah, that would be right. Yeah. So if we if we write the equation of What's the equation of this line in, in, in the x bar, y bar coordinates, right? So it's y bar is equal to b minus, and the slope is minus ax, right, x bar. So if we're integrating in the y direction, we're going to integrate from 0 to that line, right? Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. You're right. You're right. So the integrand is b dot c, b transpose dot c dot b, right? So it's the matrix multiplication. And then we're going to integrate in the y direction first. And then in the x direction. So in the x direction, we just have from 0 to a. So that's it. So I'm just going to write down what it was for that node numbering and then show you how it changes for some different node numberings. 